Yes, that is just a sneak peek of the program Awesome that premiered here on NTV airs on every Saturday at 6.30 p.m. And of course, we'll talk about engineering. And I know a lot of discussions that will be happening here on engineering may sound very esoterical to you, but don't you, don't you be afraid because also you can be engaged on how you'll find that engineering is benefiting you. So nothing that we're going to discuss here is going to fly way over your head. And I have the pleasure of welcoming now Ayana, Dr. Ayana Yonemura, Executive Director of LIWA, which is linking industries with Academia Kenya Trust, LIWA Kenya Trust. And also we have engineer Buka Angesu, CEO of Kenya Engineers, to tell us more about the program Awesome. And also as we turn our focus on the engineering sector. A very good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Right. Welcome. Maybe I should start with uh, the engineer, right? Yeah. And uh, we know about the engineering sector, and I've just uh, told our viewers how it is really driving for the economy of the, this country. Tell us more about Awesome and why you came up with the program Awesome. Who mooted the idea? Uh, thank you. It, it's actually, uh, it was a, a way of us looking. Mm -hmm how we can motivate Kenyans towards just achieving more other than celebrating the past. Mm -hmm. So then we look at, actually it's the most, uh, we've never had such a thing in this country, or even Africa, mm -hmm. uh, a show for the engineers, uh, conceived by engineers, for, but more interesting to entertain the public. Of mm -hmm. course, the misconception about engineers, are, you know, boring people and all that. So. Uh, Amazing world of engineering uh, uh, objective was actually to demystify engineering as a profession mm -hmm. and actually remind Kenyans that, you know, each and every, the challenge was look around you and tell us mm -hmm. if you don't see an engineer behind it. By the time you wake up in the morning and take your warm bath, who has actually warmed that water? The engineer has been busy somewhere. So the person that is not seen, that is not celebrated, that will not be mentioned during the 50-year celebration is actually the engineer. Mm -hmm. So when you get into your car, you know, drive to work, you get to work and sit down and use your computer. So we were looking at engineer is a very passive person, but makes a lot of effects. So the show generally geared towards not the technical part of engineering, mm -hmm. not how many ballast of what is required to do this, but it's really talking about the socio-economic effects of um, uh, an engineer. Mm -hmm. uh, if, uh, and then to inspire, uh, we want that when kids grow up, at least they can say, oh, I want to be an engineer. An engineer. Uh, yeah, which is not um, very common. And it's, it was this time that it was necessary for us to do it because um, look at what the government is talking about. Mm. We are talking about uh, you know, a middle income economy, light industries, heavy industries, who is going to be the drivers if not an engineer? Mm -hmm. So we are telling Kenyans that for all these celebrations that we are seeing celebrating 50 years of independence mm -hmm. and all these good roads and, uh, you know, the, the ambitious power project of 5,000 megawatts, without an engineer, then it is doomed to fail. So you better think about it. Which is very true when yeah. we look at maybe at Apple's also, mm -hmm. uh, the computer, uh, industry. Mm -hmm. We celebrate much of uh, Steve Jobs. We don't remember mm -hmm. people like Peter Wozniak, who's the engineer behind that. Sure. Uh, the uh, Jobs himself was just a marketing figure. Uh, so we see Jobs himself, but the, the, the brain shells actually of Apple's is Wozniak, which right. is very true. But how providential uh, also is it that you, you chose when we're celebrating 50 years of I I independence, mm -hmm. December 12th was a day. So you decided we're c coming with this program and we're going to launch it just about when we're going to be having this uh, hoop la hoop and uh, yeah, you know, the razzmatazz about the celebrations of Kenya at 50. Ayana. Well, I think y y you're right. There's a significance in the anniversary, which is celebrating, as you said, um, the past and marking a particular moment in time. But as the Booker was saying, Awesome is also very much about moving forward. Yes. Um, so awesome, A-W-E stands for the amazing world of engineering. That's mm. the name of the, of the television series. So as Kenya looks forward, 
uh, Kenya is looking at Vision 2030. Kenya is striving to become a middle-income country. So people are thinking about, well, how are we going to achieve that goal, right? Mm -hmm. And education, and uh, part of that, of course, includes engineering and all the other subjects are key to that. Mm -hmm. And also the collaboration between the academic sector and the private sector. And that's also what's depicted uh, in this series. You see how engineers are produced and created mm -hmm. in universities and academic institutions, but in order for them to make the changes that affect all of our lives, really every minute of our lives, it's because of the work that they do in the private sector. So AWESOME is really a way of um, in encapsulating some of Kenya's goals for moving forward at mm -hmm. this time. And it's done in this really important, powerful medium of television. 1.2 million people mm -hmm. turned into awesome mm -hmm. last week. And so um, we, we realize when we look at that, that if you want to educate the public and also nurture uh, Kenyans' appreciation for education and um, hard work and the world around them, we can do that through television. You're going to have small children watching the show, uh, grandparents watching the show. It's a way to educate uh, the whole family mm -hmm. and inform them um, and intrigue them, pique their curiosity. Right. And this is where you really come in now with uh, Liwa Kenya Trust, mm -hmm. linking uh, industries with academia. Exactly. Right? How are you working then in tandem with uh, the engineers mm -hmm. in making sure also right, is also running sim sim seamlessly, mm -hmm. right, in terms of academia. Maybe you can expound more on how the academia bit is coming into play. Mm -hmm. Is it just a source of funding, or how do you really work it out all together? Oh, okay, well, there are a couple of, of aspects uh, that speak to your question. First of all, the upcoming episode, which yes. will air on NTV this coming Saturday at mm -hmm. 6.30, is on education and training. It's on the education and training of engineers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's one aspect. Um, both industry and academia are part of the subject matter mm -hmm. of this show. Now, uh, LIWA, along with uh, Kenya Engineer Magazine, mm -hmm. we're sponsoring the show because <coughs> LIWA's mandate is really to um, immediately close the gap between industry and academia. Yes. Right now, Kenya is producing many university graduates. Kenyans are very ambitious when it yes. comes to higher education. Yes. And at the same time, there are entrepreneurs who want to grow the private sector. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, many of the university graduates don't have the skills mm -hmm which the entrepreneurs need, which the industry need. So for LIWA to partner with Kenya Engineer in this endeavor is a way of highlighting that situation, which is a way of also showing a path forward in terms of how Kenya can achieve its vision 2030. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think also the government has been crying foul of lack of engineers in the country. And uh, the aspect also of brainchild in the, uh, the um, exportation of the, the, the brainchild here in the country where people, yes, they've grown up and uh, they've been s they're studying in this country and then we have the brain drain, that's the word I'm looking for, mm -hmm. to mm. maybe America and the Western uh, countries. Tell us more about how that has adversely affected uh, your sector. Um, I would say uh, it, it, it's a question of patriotism and looking at the internal conditions of our um, profession or of our economy as Kenya. So if you see people going out to look for plant jobs and coming back, mm -hmm. uh, th th that is more of a policy uh, that um, needs to be taken care of by policy makers. Because if you, if you spend so much money to train an engineer and then just allow him you know, mm -hmm. to go and practice elsewhere just because you cannot you know, give him a better job, you cannot give him better conditions to work, so I think the challenge then should be the government should then invest more money in terms of innovation, mm -hmm. of, in terms of light industries. Mm -hmm. We want to move forward in terms of heavy industries. When you do that, mm -hmm. then you make the engineer's life much comfortable at home. So mm -hmm. there will be no reason for me to be going, you know, to look for a job elsewhere. Well, you know, I know I am a trained, for example, an energy engineer. Mm -hmm. Then I'm looking forward. Um, all these good models I come with after my fifth year and we present them and you're given marks and you graduate on them. How can then model them into something that can, you know, affect life? Other than making um, the engineering sector in Kenya is quite underdeveloped mm. in the sense that you, you then become somebody who implement manuals. You mm -hmm. go and read and then the, the, the machinery comes in and then 
you're like a service. You're like a, you know, uh, a technician. An automaton, yeah. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> you just, uh, but we are looking at um, an engineer who is creating solutions, making Kenyans' life simple, uh, taming nature. For example, if we go and look at, uh, look at this huge problem in Budalangi, the flood. How does an engineer come in? Mm -hmm. Then we can design systems that can save that water to be used there for the residents. Mm -hmm. We use the same water again to generate power for the residents. That means we are more solution-based. Mm -hmm. Then we are not bookish. But if, if then we, do, we have an economy that is um, you know, developed on what I call mutumbaism, mm -hmm. where everything is exported, mm -hmm. um, we export raw material and import finished products. Well, then that means for us as a country, from the engineering perspective, that we are then exporting jobs. We are exporting, we are actually suppliers, we are mm. feeders of the, the, the industries abroad. But we do not have the internal conditions to elevate the life of then an engineer to then operate an industry. If, if you're looking, uh, you know, look, look, look fairly back, um, looking, looking at maybe 90s, mm -hmm. when, um, the, the industry sector was a bit growing, especially the textile industry yes. in Kenya. We have much Kenyan, the, the engineering as a profession was treated well. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, the challenge we faced then, uh, we, the people who look at engineers, they look at bright people that can do other things but not engineers. Mm -hmm. So you find engineers being trained to become accountants. Mm -hmm. You find engineers are auditors, you know. And, and, and that is not good for our country. So the policy makers should then think, how then can we invest and look more on internal conditions to, the ele to elevate the life of an engineer? Do, don't you think you stand to be also in a very good state? Yes. As an engineer himself, you've yeah. been through the process, now you're practicing it, mm -hmm. and you've seen the reality on the ground. Right now we're talking about overhauling the entire curricula. Correct. You've been to the field, you know what really works and what does not really work. Correct. Don't you think you should be uh, obviously involved in the development of these policies? So that, yes, yes our education, yes. our system, our curriculum mm -hmm. is actually tailor-made to the industry. And I think this is where also, uh, Dr. Ayana, you're really coming into play. Yes. Absolutely. Because uh, you know what has been happening in the industry, and we can mm -hmm. compare that also with the universities that are just churning out uh, engineers, yet the market cannot really absorb people, right? Maybe we pick from uh, you, then yes. we come to you, Dr. Uh, Ayana. Really, the engineers have been doing a bit of work, especially in terms of tailoring what the students consume yes. in class. Yes. Uh, of course, we know uh, through the efforts of um, Engineers Registration Board, or now Engineers Board of Kenya, they are actually looking at the content to make it relevant mm -hmm. to, to, to the industry. Of course, we have had a, a bit of issues mm -hmm. <laughs> with uh, the education sector in terms of being overzealous, introducing courses mm -hmm. that are a bit much simplistic in a way. But we we will look at, we, we have seen a lot of even government effort uh, coming up with the Commission of Higher Education to, to know, partner with um, uh, regis uh, our registration body. The Institution of Engineers of Kenya is also doing their part. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, uh, what even informs our partnerships with Lewa is that the, the universities and the industries work more in Kenya in isolation. You know, it, it's, it's like we are meant to train. But then, where is the training money coming from? Mm. There's some small thing coming from government, but again, the industries must then invest on, mm. on, 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 on engineering education. So then Lewa comes to link us with the industry, mm. and we want that inflow of resources, and we want outflow of you know, expertise, so that every engineer that comes from, from for example, University of Nairobi, mm. should be able to make a specific need in the industry. And, 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 and that, I think, uh, uh, to me, it's more solution based from the engineering perspective. But you can uh, be, uh, graduate, for example, as an energy engineer or water engineer. But what happens if you don't have somewhere to, you know, mm. to practice? Then you will find yourself looking for international jobs. And by the time we know, we are short of engineers. And so we should focus on training and focus on industry. I think both two go together. Right, Dr. Ayana, do you have a different perspective from what he's saying? Uh, actually, our perspectives are very much shared and overlapping. 
It's the private sector here in Kenya which initiated LIWA, Linking mm -hmm. Industry with Academia Kenya Trust, in Correct. 2010. And one of LIWA's areas of focus is private sector informed curriculum. So this really speaks directly mm -hmm. to your question. Um, when um, industry leaders actually work with the academic staff mm -hmm. to make sure that the skills of not only engineers but of people from all disciplines, yes. students from all disciplines, mm -hmm. are relevant to the current economy, mm -hmm. the entire economy grows. And, and, and industry people know this. That's why they initiated LIWA, that's why they founded it, and that's why they work with LIWA. LIWA has already nurtured over 20 partnerships between private sector companies and universities uh, here in Kenya. So this is a, a, this is a, this is a challenge uh, which LIWA is meeting, this gap between the industry needs and the current skills of the graduates. Mm -hmm. Right. Right now, of course, our economy is expanding and we know we have the nuclear energy authority that is in place right now. And I believe, I think it was last year that the, the a curriculum for now the nuclear energy was established at the Nairobi University. Mm -hmm. Two questions I have for you. One is, first of all, how are we also maybe looking forward a trajectory into 2024 mm -hmm. where the nuclear energy in, in the country will be more feasible, uh, it, it will be more applicable because right now we're still in the very formative stages of trying to come up with uh, a structure of how we, we're going to run that. How is your sector uh, coming into play also to try and assist in this? Then the next question is, we don't celebrate our engineers here. Very good innovations uh, the, the, that have come from this country. Yet all that we can see is CNN heroes. We are celebrating our heroes here in the country. What are you as a sector, uh, what is you as a, as a sector, the Kenyan engineers, really doing to try and address this? Do you have any awards for our engineers? Mm -hmm. How is LIWA also trying to also propel this to make sure that we celebrate our own? Yes. We don't wait for CNN to really showcase our talent for the entire world. We can do it here at home. Absolutely. I, I would love to respond uh, to that question. Well, actually, there's a, a few questions that you have there, all of which are are very interesting, but in terms of, of celebrating uh, heroes, mm -hmm. I think that's one of the beauties of awesome of the television series, right. because uh, most of us, and I'm not an engineer, most of us really don't know what engineers do or how much they shape the world, mm -hmm. and by watching awesome, that's how how we learn about it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And all of the content of Awesome is about Kenya. So it's very much a way of enhancing people's appreciation of the world around them and also the people around them, mm -hmm. the businesses around them, the educational institutions around them, uh, everything uh, right there in their midst that they can see and touch. It's nothing in a remote like mm -hmm. I know CNN, for example, comes from um, from the United States. Mm -hmm. So um, certainly we're doing that through Awesome, but LIWA also has an initiative uh, which is to provide awards to both uh, private sector companies mm -hmm. and also universities which are particularly strong in working with each other, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a way in which LIWA is incentivizing this type of cooperation. Of course it behooves all parties, but most importantly it behooves the larger economy of Kenya, mm -hmm. right? Currently um, there is a uh, potential in mm -hmm. the Kenyan economy which is not being realized. Yes, right. It, Mm. Uh, shall I also sure. talk about nuclear yeah, energy? Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I'll just do a, a, ver a very quick word on that, then I'll turn it over to the engineer. I think that um, every nation wants to have multiple sources of energy because that's the way the nation can be most um, secure. Mm -hmm. So in addition to the experts in terms of nuclear energy, all of, all, the, all of the experts which are involved in energy, whether that's water, solar, etc., need to be celebrated and they need to be supported mm -hmm. because that's the way in which uh, any nation, Kenya in particular in this case, be, can be autonomous in the future and not have to uh, rely on um, neighboring countries for power. Right. All right, Ngesa, briefly as we're winding up because we're really strapped for time. Ah, okay, fine. Uh, you mentioned very interesting things, but um, um, I'll just put them fairly into perspective. Yes. One is um, the engineers will not wait to be recognized. Just like any other person, mm -hmm. you do not wait to be recognized. You claim your space. So one of the initiatives is let Kenyans know that we touch their life at, the most, uh, at their most point of need. Mm -hmm. So if you're talking of food crisis, it needs an engineering solution. If you're talking of water, you need, if you're talking of power, you need transport, 
every Kenyan should then think we need an engineering solution. Mm -hmm. Even in terms of decision making, when that then gets out there, then the engineering is then starting to, to actually claim their space. You've talked about um, nuclear energy. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting subject because uh, the, even, even at the professional level, we have different uh, you know, opinions about it. But I, uh, my, my own analysis has been we cannot look at these things in isolation. For example, energy requirement in this country must be then, we, we must look at the, you know, uh, what, what do we need that power for? Mm -hmm. You see, for example, we say here that we need 5,000 megawatts. Maybe I think now we are at 1,400, sometimes 1,500. But the minimal power requirement goes down, mm. you know. But when we increase it to 5,000 megawatts, do we have a requirement to that? Mm -hmm. And the only requirement we need is industry. You know, we can talk of uh, standard railway gauge consuming much, but what is it getting from it? W what is the economy getting from, you know, the, the, the whole aspect? So I think uh, we should not look at just the peak loads. But it's more interesting we look at uh, our power usage um, as mm -hmm. well. And then uh, celebrating engineers, uh, engineers have to do something extraordinary that it's not just perceived as intellectual, but something that touch, touches somebody's life, then you will be celebrated. All right. <laughs> Socially. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thank Dr. Very Ayana much. Yonimura, Executive Thank Director. You of Liwa Trust and also engineer Buka Ngesa, the CEO of Kenya Engineer Engineers. And of course, we've been talking a good game about Awesome, the program that premiered here on NTV. Awesome stands for Amazing Wax in Engineering, and it airs on Saturday at 6.30 p.m., very interesting. Don't think that it is something which is very esoterical, as I said before, that it really goes way over your head. But this is a program tailor-made for you on how engineering is affecting your life and affecting Kenya as a country, right? So make sure you tune in every Saturday, 6.30 p.m. here on NTV. We take a short break right now. Don't go away. Much more coming up.